Hello centaurs and welcome to the Hunker Bunker. For those of you who don't know, uh, this is where with the fifth graders I've been teaching them about math throughout this spring and for summer camp today we're not going to spend most of our time in the Hunker Bunker. In fact we're going to get outside the bunker. We're going to start though here and talk about some stuff before we go to do some science in the field. I'm also a science teacher and a scientist and you guys for your summer adventure for the summer camp with me you guys are going to go outside and get to know a little bit about your local creek and do some field science. So what is it that we're going to do when we go outside? Well, what we're going to do is we're going to look at how clean water is. What makes water not be clean? Well, we could say water is dirty. But that's not a very great scientific term because then we're normally just looking at whether water is carrying mud or or if it has a particular colour. Sometimes very clear water might actually not be clean because it can carry pollutants that allow th and the reason why that it's clear may be that nothing is living in it because of those pollutants. So actually a really good way of telling if water it has good quality is good quality water or if the water is bad quality water, it's actually to look at what's living in it. And when we're looking at what's living in it, we want to look at macro invertebrates. See what I did there? Macro invertebrates. Nice. And these are small, small, small creatures. No bigger than the biggest would probably be around about five centimeters to 10 centimeters, something uh, like a, a crayfish and going down as small as a half a centimetre, something about like this big. Now, they're macro because they're big enough to see, and they're invertebrates because they don't have a backbone. And in the link down below, you can find a key. That key has some pictures of some of these animals for you to use to identify them. Also, another key which has some branches. They allow you to identify the macro invertebrates. Let me show you how. All right, so to help you identify these critters, I've put these three charts. The first one looks just like this. And what it has is pictures of all of the, and I have upside down. Uh, it has pictures of all of the different living things that you might find, and you just match up the picture, and then it will tell you the name, and then it will tell you a little bit of information about each animal. This is really great if you're just really trying to look at the thing and find it. Problem is, is that it doesn't have quite so many of the species as some of the other charts. This chart is really good because it's a key and that means that it has questions and when you answer the questions you, it helps you identify. So the first uh, the first question says are the joined legs? You can either answer yes or no and uh, then it's going to say, well not even yes or no, it's going to say yes, six, yes, ten, yes, eight, no. And so then based on the number of legs you would go to the next question. When you find that answer that next question you can slowly work down all of the questions until you find that particular animal. Another chart that I did put in that looks a little more is the same type of thing is this. I like this the most, but it's probably the hardest to use. It doesn't have coloured pictures. And also you'll notice that I had to print it on two pieces and then carefully tape it in the middle. This chart is really great if you're maybe in third, fourth, fifth grade. Uh, it does have some really, really uh, rare species, so it has more species. Uh, but it's a similar thing as that one we just saw. Shell, no shells. Then under shells, legs, no legs. So if I found an animal, it's not got a shell. It does have legs. Does it have ten legs uh, or more? Four pairs of legs or three pairs of legs? Okay, it has four pairs of legs, let's just say. And then it's going to give me two options and then I use those two options to identify my animal. So you're asking yourself questions just like on the last chart, but you have more animals and it's a little bit more hard to hold on to it and you don't have those coloured pictures. So those are three different things you might use to identify animals. So now we know how to use the key. We know that we're looking for tiny little animals that might be as small as this and as big as this and that they don't have a bat bone. We also know that they're going to tell us if some, the creek water is clean 
or if it's polluted the quality of the water. Now remember we're thinking about species. If I find lots and lots of flatworms for example, which is a particular species if you look in those sheets, that doesn't mean I have good quality water. It's only if I have lots and lots of different species that I can say I have good quality water because different species are more or less tolerant to pollute different types of pollution. Okay, so we're going out into the field, we're going to look for these creatures and tell us about how good the water quality is. Another thing we need to think about is where are we going to head? Well, that's up to you. I happen to live a little bit away from Horace Mann uh, on the other side of the sea, but I'm going to show you a park that is close to Horace Mann. I could have done this nearby in Rock Creek Park where I am, but we're going to have a look at a particular part of Rock Creek Park called Battery Kemble, and we're going to look at three possible locations that you could go to, but if you're not near Battery Kemble, or in you like I am and you live in a different part of the sea, you can still get out and look at the, the, the things that live in your creek. You can still look even if you're not in the sea, if you're away for the, for, for the summer. These, these guides work across the eastern seaboard of the United States. They're not so great if you are living, uh, looking in, in different parts of the world, maybe. Another thing to know is that they are freshwater macroinvertebrates. That means you want to look somewhere where the water doesn't have any salt. So if you are near the sea, then the water in a creek will actually have a little bit of salt in it. It's called brackish water. So you're not going to be able to find all of these creatures because they don't live in salt water. All right, so now that we know what a macroinvertebrate is, we know we're going to go out into the creeks and find them. We know that we're looking at them because they tell us if the water is polluted or not polluted. Let's have a gander at what gear we're going to need. Uh, being an outdoor person myself, you know, I've got all the gear and no idea. So let's get that ready. I've got my uh, day pack right here. Uh, some block, of course. Uh, I was thinking I might need some rope. Uh, you never know when you're going to need some rope to lasso around errant bears or abseil off the uh, side of any particular rock face. So I'll take that. Uh, always very, very important to have a climbing harness. Of course, you need to climb. Climbing. I've actually got two harnesses, but I already have one in there. Always have a harness in there. Got to have your climbing shoes too. Uh, Helmet, you're gonna need a helmet, of course. There's my helmet, you see that? Um, I have to have some gear, probably. Got the hexes. Safety figure eight. Uh, for belaying, have that one. Oh, I'm gonna have my figures, I still have my uh, rack of clips to grab from in here. So, we've well, got to have a book about uh, climbing knots. First aid kit was very important. Uh, my fire starter kit. That's my fire starter kit right there. Headlamp. Never know, you might get. Wait a second. Tent. Yeah, just, you know, go out on a hike, might get caught out in bad weather. Sleeping bag, of course, with that too. Uh, and in case there's any wolves or anything, I thought I'd bring my compound bow. Uh, where's my bag? Second thoughts, I am only going to be going in the woods for around about an hour, so I may have overestimated on the stuff I need. Uh, thinking about it again, and the cat's telling me, probably only just need the papers printed, sunblock, bug spray, some good shoes for, uh, for walking in, appropriate clothes. Cats definitely agree with that. And uh, maybe some band-aids just in case I split myself. Yeah, I think that, so I think that's probably all you need actually thinking about it. I think I went a bit overboard there. Yeah, so let's, let's, let's just settle on that. So you need your guides to find the animals. You need some sunblock. You need some bug spray. And uh, if you have an adult with you, you want to bring some band-aids, as we would say in England, plasters just in case you slip uh, somewhere and make sure you got some good shoes for walking in and you'll be fine. Yeah. 
Oops. So, actually reduced the packing a little bit and uh, ready to go. Off we go, gentlemen. We're going where the sun shines brightly We're going where the sea is blue We've seen it in the movies Now let's see if it's true So here we are on MacArthur Boulevard. I used to work here. This is one of the locations you could go to in Barry Kemble down this way. So if you are on MacArthur Boulevard and you see the red schoolhouse, you can head down this track to find one spot where you can test. And also if you want to, you go somewhere that's in your neighborhood if uh, you, or in another part of the country, wherever you are, you can always do this type So we, we're turning left at the first left that we can go. If you head that way, uh, you'll come to another bridge. You could take Creek Day there by all means. And you can even head on down and get through a little tunnel to the Potomac River, but right now we're going to go this way. So we're going to call this spot right here, uh, uh, we're going to call it spot A, just why not. So if you come off MacArthur Boulevard going towards the Potomac River, this is going to be spot A in, in Battery Kemble. If you take data here, we're going to have two of the spots in Battery Kemble, and then if you do it somewhere else, you can just label it however you want to label it. So the creek's right behind me. As soon as you find your creek, you're just going to put down your backpack. Make sure you got your sunblock on and make sure you got your bug spray on and then take out your identification chart. I've got my identification cards right here and then you can just get into get in, in a day. If you've got water shoes, you can get into the water. Cameron already found some things in a rock. Let's go look. Cameron, you got some leeches. So if you look, Cameron's turning over the rocks to find what's underneath them. That's a really great way of doing this, is just looking what's on them. You can't find the rock now, Cam? We had the rock and now we've lost the rock. Oh, there. there they are. These guys right here. Let's focus in on them. Yummy. You can see them moving around on the rock right there. And so we can say we've got first thing. In fact, this one right here, this guy's actually a flat one. That's cool. All right, so Cameron and I weren't sure if we had leeches or flat ones, but by using our chart, we can tell that we definitely had that triangular head that's on the right which tells us it must have been a flatworm. There he is right on the top of the water you can see we've got another aquatic species remember it's living on the water so it's telling us about the water quality. See right there he's got how many legs can we count? Four. And so we can use that situation to this is going to be a better chart for us. We can look that we don't have it doesn't have a shell so we want to be on this side of the chart. We also had legs so we're going to go down here. The next question is how many legs it had. Four pairs of legs, ten pairs of legs, three pairs of legs. Well, we saw four legs, so I'm guessing, though, that we must have just missed some ones just blowing in our seat. I'm guessing that we just missed a pair, because if you look there, we've got three pairs of legs. You go to wings, and then you can see right there, there's this animal, which has got leathery wings, called the water stride. And if you look at that, that looks exactly like what we just saw, with the four points of contact. Cool. So as well as looking on rocks, look underneath rocks. So if we're going to take, take a look in the water and just to see if we can find anything. Of course, this being science, I'm not necessarily going to have something pre-planned. It might. In this type of brush right here, you might often find uh, the caterpillar larva. Look also on the pools of water that are on the side, like you see right there, where the move, water's moving less rapidly than in the center. You can see right there. There's a water boatman. So right here is a perfect area. The only problem with this is that you definitely want to try and look on the sides and look out if you see any bubbles or anything here that might mean that something's buried down in the surface. And be ready to dig down into the, the mud and grime on the sides of any of these areas. So of course if you pull out a rock to look underneath it, quite often you're actually going to kick up a bunch of this. It's called sediment. It just means the sediment is all of the parts of the soil that are going to be transported by water. It's 
where we get sedimentary rocks from. All right, so at this location in just about five minutes of searching, we didn't take videos of all these, but we found some aquatic worms. We found some flatworms. We found some leeches, leeches as well as the, the flatworms that we spotted. And we found a water boatman. So it puts us at four species just in five minutes of looking. Uh, the more species we find, the better the water is. These animals have to live in the water. That's why they're called uh, indicator species. They indicate how good the water is. So it tells us that the water quality here is better or worse depending on the number of animals we find. Obviously, uh, by all of us as a horse man looking, we'll be able to get better data. We're now going to go and show you the next place you might want to look. We're going to call it location B. I also call it Coffin Rock. All right, so as you can see there, the trail splits between two ways. You're going to take this uh, looking at it from MacArthur Boulevard. We don't want to go up. We want to stay along with the, the uh, creek going right. So whether you access it from Hor Horace Mann, you can go all the way down through Battery Kemble or from, or from MacArthur Boulevard coming up, you're going to come to this big rock, I call it Coffin Rock, my friend Matt Walters and I, uh, maybe it came from somewhere else, but he was the one who, you know, I've always said Coffin Rock, so uh, right here there's a great location for creek testing, we're going to call this Location B, if you test here it is Location B, and if you stand on the rock like Cameron, that's great, but just be careful. Make sure that you know where your limits lie, and there's Wyatt too. Yeah, look at all the bubbles. Yeah, the bubbles are just caused by the, the, the air getting trapped as the water comes down. Oh. When water comes, when water falls over, you're going to get air bubbles being air bubbles being trapped. That's why oh, you want to look, look for look, air bubbles at the side. Look here! Look! 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 Here Within a few seconds, we've got a, pat, a snail right on there. Yeah. I'm trying to see whether you can see it right there. Ooh, pouch snail. Uh, can, again, I can use my identification chip kit. Luckily, I'm just a superstar old school uh, science teacher who's done this many, many times. It's a pouch now. Now, this one's a little bit more interesting. Right here, we found some people living on the rock right there. You can see that this is a black fly larva. A shark for no legs. And then I'm looking for with tentacles. Well, you can't see on your thing, but it does have tentacles right at the top of where it is. Uh, I see all of these just right here. This is black fly larva. You might even find flies living on things. All right, so we have our last location right here, calling it location C. I also call it the bridge. This bridge, which White is on right now, you may have seen before. So many of you, if you've been to outdoor class, will have been across this bridge and. Fifth graders last year, we went to this bridge. We're in Battery Kemble right now. If you go along this path, uh, you'll come to MacArthur Boulevard where we were before. You'll first pass Coffin Rock. Uh, this path right here leads their way at Battery uh, through past the parking lot, which is currently closed due to COVID-19. And then you can go all the way up to Nebraska Avenue and then on Taurus Man. So right here we have uh, location C and you'll notice a lot of fine uh, rocks right here at this point past the bridge it can be a little bit hard to find things on the other side of the bridge in these pools they're quite hard to get down so if you make sure you're using hands and feet to get down here and that you're with an adult so that you can be safe but this can be a really good spot to find things in the brush there for example uh, there is a Horace Mann legend. For years and years and years of me doing this uh, with different groups, we always would find a crayfish just around here. Normally around there, actually. And it has one claw missing. I call him one leg Joe. If you can find him, let me know. That would be amazing. Uh, I think that the first person to find him was Charlie Pace, which is Miss Fry's son, and Clay Baldwin. And that would be back in 2010. So unlikely that one leg Joe is still around, but let me know if he is. So remember, this is location C. You can do this testing as many times as you want. You could do location testing at A, then B, then C on the same day and see if you see any difference. You could come back to C lots of times 
and see if you notice a difference based on weather or based on other factors. If you look down below, as I said before, there are links to our materials, the keys, the identification keys. There's also a link to the form where you can write in a, there's going to be some questions, your name, so you're going to say where it's your location you did it, so you say Barry Kimball A, B or C, or if you did it somewhere else in the world or wherever you want, you could write about that. Then you can also write down the weather, you can put down is it hot, today it's about 85 degrees and sunny, so that may affect what we're finding. And there's also going to be another question of how many species did you find so today, the boys and I, we found eight different species. And then we're gonna, there's gonna be a space for you to write some of the names. So that's the next question. So there's a question of just the number and there's the number of, and the names. Any of the data that you have would be great. I'm gonna have a spot for other things you notice, whether you see a lot of trash, or uh, for example, if you're lucky enough to be able to test something called acidity, pH, uh, that's something else you could test. I'm not gonna talk to you guys about that right now. So we're gonna get some really great data on how good our creek systems are and get some Horace Mann macroinvertebrate data. Thank you.